Life advice. What's up, Kyle? What's up, Steve? Okay, we've got a couple hot ones. Out the jump. Let's do it. Going on a date after she saw me piss my pants. <laughs> 26, 6, 3, 290, mostly fat, down 35 pounds. Hey. Yeah. Win. Big dude, a lot of size. Uh, Kellen Martin, NBA comp. Okay. I went out on Halloween weekend with the boys. One of my good friends brought his girlfriend. So naturally she, uh, she brought some friends along. We've all hung out before a handful of times over the last eight, nine months, but it's usually rather low key. Um, the drinks start flowing. I start flirting with one of the women. Let's call her Mariah. Like anybody, the confidence is up a few notches with some beer pitchers under my belt. The night goes well until we hit the second bar where Mariah tells me to drink her tequila soda. She ordered a double, but she's a regular at this bar, so the bartender put a sliver of club soda in the drink. I down the drink quickly, and everybody orders their Ubers to head to their separate ways for the night. This is when all hell breaks loose. Only the two of us remain as we wait for our ride shares. As they pull up, I say, I'm not doing well. And I ask her to stay with me until I feel better. A 40-minute disaster ensues where I'm vomiting, sweating, and ultimately end up pissing my pants. Things got so bad, I incoherently called my sister and pulled my single-use sibling bailout card as I'm puking on my crawl to my sister's vehicle. Mariah was right by my side making sure I was able to get in the car. So I guess the sister came to pick the dude up. Uh, shout out to that sister. Shout out to Mariah and my sister, or I definitely would have been arrested. Okay, yep, there we go. Double shout out. I follow her on Instagram a couple days later. She sends me her number and quickly asks me to drinks and or dinner. I figured I'd say yes, as I'd be more comfortable to say no than to say yes, since I will be seeing her again. My dilemma. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see one yet. Um, I'm not looking to jump into a relationship as I'm six months removed from a five-year relationship. I was planning on slow playing it for the next three to six months and feel things out, especially after what months. happened. God damn, dude. <laughs> My man's got a plan. Let's He's go. He's got a fucking Verizon plan over there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The next five years. Thanks, Digby. Um, something I am also concerned about is messing with the current friend group dynamic. She's a really cool woman. All nice job by you. Stuff, right. Yeah. Uh, and is rather attractive. However, after this weekend's events, I can't decide if it's the biggest red flag or green light to pursue her. Is she simply understanding and kind? Should I be concerned that she's too accepting of a total dickheadness and depravity? Uh, thanks for reading the novel. Actually, that was fine. And happy belated to Marlo. Thanks, man. Uh, all right. So just to recap here, you're a big dude. The tequila got to you. <laughs> Look, stuff gets to dudes. It happens, you know, but you're still yeah. only 26. So usually the, the hard booze messes messes with the older guys, uh, you know, influx ratios, all that stuff. And she's hot. And she was like, yeah, let's get together after you pissed your pants in front of her. And the problem is, <laughs> I don't. Right. Right. Like, I think it's amazing that people can be this cool to each other. I remember a uh, first date long, long time ago in Boston, just a simple pub, food, couple of drinks. Uh, the girl was like, can you drive? And I was like, yeah, we, we've only had like a couple of drinks, like no problem. Um, drive back to my house. And she's like, I didn't plan on coming in, but I something's wrong with me. And I was like, no problem. And she threw up all over the front stoop of my apartment building. And Got then, out of the car though. Big one. Huge, yeah, but did get her, out of the car. <laughs> it was a school night too. So she went to the bedroom. The apartment sucked. I played Madden and I think called my buddy who lived in LA and was like, Yeah, I just went on this this first date. And he was like, What the hell's going on? I was like, She just threw up. He's like, Is she a mess? I was like, No, she's like actually really has her shit together. And so then she was so embarrassed, tons of apologies. And I was just like, I I don't, you know, whatever. But it did get a little weird though. She's like, Do you think something happened? Do you think She's like, you didn't put anything in my drink, did you? I was like, what? You fucking like, oh god, you know. I, but I kind of was just like, drops. Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> like I do I need be, a lawyer? Because I helped. Yeah, you. right. Fuck. Right. <laughs> like, I wasn't gonna be offended, and she you know, ended up. She was. She was a great person. So anyway, the point. The point is, is like, I get why some. I think most people would be like, fuck that guy. I'm never talking to him again. And the fact that you're. 
I, I don't know. I, I guess I just, you wanted to spend time with her. You also have this plan of slow playing it. Um, she's giving you a pass on what most guys would never get a pass on. I think you should feel great. As far as the red flag, green light part of it, the fact that she's a regular at the second bar that you went to and the bartender's knew her. And, you know, the the cool thing about the bartenders knowing you is that it's can help. It also, they feel like they're doing you some huge favor by pouring you the stiffest drinks ever. And you're like, I actually don't need this. Um, in this case, maybe because she, I don't know if she ever bartended or if she, you know, because she she hangs out there a lot, maybe her threshold for depravity is a little bit higher yep. than the yep. average person. That's what I would say. Right. So look, and I, I look, I would just rather, I would rather have somebody be un now granted, if you're doing this all the time, she's going to tell you to bounce as anyone should be told to bounce. But the fact that you've met somebody that you're attracted to, that's cool with this is a win. I, I, I think I don't, I don't see it being a huge problem. I, I don't think you should overthink this one. I, I mean, I'd ask is she's so cool that she's cooler than you, that if you did get in, you know, you guys did get along would they totally take her in the divorce, this friend group that you're a little worried about? Because we just kind of had one of these deals. Is she so cool that you, it's going to be a no-brainer that you're out once once this thing uh, inevitably, you know, or maybe doesn't, but would maybe fall apart? Is that is that the big hesitation for him? Because he's like, oh, you know, she's a big part of the friend group. You know, most dudes could could take a, a really unbiased look and be like, no, 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 like it's going to be, if it's her or me, it's definitely going to be me. But I don't know. It sounds like she's pretty cool. Well, it sounds like she's going to be around because his buddy's dating her friend, right? Is that what you said? Yeah. So, so I wouldn't. I don't know. I don't think your buddy's going to be like, "Hey, dude, like you're you're all right." <laughs> so like, yeah. Start hanging out with this other girl. <laughs> like, I don't know. I think you're fine there. Um, I actually, I don't think this is this is this again. I know we've been we talked about this with the uh, with the going to the the football game with the dad and his friend thing. This sounds kind of Midwesty to me. I just feel like this is like a. She seems like a wholesome girl who like is a nice person and. I feel like it'd be way more of a red flag if she just bailed on you and you were struggling that night than it is that she wanted to help you out and like maybe wants to hang out with you again. So I kind of think you're in your head too much here. She totally. like, yeah, like our, you know, we all do embarrassing things. I mean, I guess, you know, you're 26. So like, you know, I, I, my friends, me certainly have done our fair share of embarrassing things in front of girls that we've been dated or hung out with. You know, when you're kind of reaching that like young adulthood, it is a little bit more sketchy, but you're still pretty young where I don't know. I remember like the early days at ESPN when you know I was working overnights or whatever, maybe when I initially started working on on your show, Ryan with, with Scott, like I was still an idiot in downtown West Hartford. I did dumb stuff around a lot of girls that I still talk to and are nice and now have friends and families and everyone. It just it just kind of is part of life. So Heavens. I think I think you're just I think you're kind of too young to to have this be like a red. If if you were in your 30s and you were doing this, maybe it's a big deal. But you're 26. I don't know. Yeah, you've either found an empath or a fucking. Uh, mess a huge mess and if she's not a huge mess she's probably an empath so i think that's good that's good for you and then you should you should see where that goes and maybe maybe speed up the 36 month plan but um but yeah that, don't, that, don't worry I, about this that's more of a red flag i think anything else 36 month plan i don't know like you can't deviate from that plan at all what if she's awesome and what if you want to date her i, I just I, don't, I think i don't like that idea I wonder if the plan was like he figured he was just going to hang out, hook up for a bit or whatever. But now that he screwed up and then she was like, let's get dinner. But that's too formal. And that's messing up or his drinks, charts. right? That's what she right. said. Dinner or drinks. She gave him an she out. Did say, well, yeah, apparently she was like, you can drink again around me. Like, I don't I, I would say I'd also add this. I don't know. I love that you're six, three, two, ninety. I think that eliminates you from some of the pool with other women <laughs> where they're going to be like, this guy's enormous. Okay. And I don't, I'm not saying you're sloppy or anything like that, but that's a big dude. That's a lot of size. And you know, we got people emailing in here. who can't meet anybody. And you're like, yeah, this attractive person likes me after I blacked out and pissed on myself. <laughs> so, you know, who's the winner here? Perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Think of it that way. And as far as this whole like friend group dynamic, like guess what happens? People start to hook up and then guess what happens? They stop and life moves on. So, you know, unless you're just fucking Batman and you're out there just soloing it, meeting people on your own, be happy you have a friend group where there's other dynamics that even lead to a potential opportunity. You know, like, don't take that for granted. Like I get yeah. not wanting to throw the whole thing off, but like, what do you think you're going to do? You're going to be one of these guys that you hear about on a Reddit thread in the grocery store? 
you know, when we tried to help out the Nashville guy, I actually started looking up some stuff and I was like, dude, I'm, I'm embarrassed. I'm even reading some of these things. It's like, oh, a bookstore is a good place to meet somebody. Is it? You been to a bookstore? <laughs> oh. Pumpkin. Yeah, that's like that's like 30 seconds of conversation. And then like move along, pal. I think like <laughs> the bookstore is I don't agree. Oh, fiction. <laughs> okay all right we have another friend group dynamic one here that's a little different no one urinated on themselves uh let's see here how to help me not break my friend's heart again six foot one 185 crossfit hobbyist 275 clean and jerk 545 mile 30 years old, haven't seriously dated someone in seven years due to several factors that are unimportant to uh, unimportant to this email. However, I've been dating somebody for the past two months and it's going really well. We have similar hobbies, worldviews, sense of humor, lifestyles, et cetera. We, have, uh, we haven't had the exclusive relationship talk, but we both share that this feels different. We could see something really developing here. She lives in a nearby city about 90 minutes away, which sucks, but we're both down to give it a shot based on the connection we've had so far. All right, great start. Problem lies in how I introduced this girl to one specific female friend of mine. Let's call her Jen. I'm fortunate to have a really close group of friends in my city, a core group of six that hangs out all the time, uh, and an outer circle of 12 to 14 where everyone gets along really well. Everyone's in their 30s. Everyone is married except for Jen and I, and it's been like this for years. We're in the Southeast, so everyone got married young. Because of this dynamic, Jen and I have been in dozens and dozens of situations over the years where it looks like we're dating because everyone has paired off dinners, weddings, parties, out at bars, events, etc., to be honest, sometimes it even feels like we are dating. Whenever we're at a dinner with friends, the waiter assumes we're together and hands me the bill with Jen and I's tabs. We live less than a mile from each other, so we often ride share places together for casual dinner at a friend's house or if there's an event we're both going to. Jen is a cute girl, same age as me, has a great job. We like the same college football team. We have the same hobby. She's an overall incredible person. This guy's just rolling in it. Um, we get along great. We have a really awesome friendship. And as you can imagine, people have been asking us for years why we don't date each other. The truth is I'm just not attracted to her. I could have guessed that. Mm. I've tried to get there, but I just can't. She's not unattractive at all. I'm just not attracted to her. Unfortunately, Jen has liked me for years. I know this because one, her girlfriends have dropped this hint many times. Two, two years ago, Jen and I, or excuse, Jen asked to hang out one-on-one. -on -one, and she told me she has feelings and has had feelings for a long time and wants to try dating. It was a really shitty conversation where I very kindly told her I didn't see her in that way. She didn't take it very well. I asked how we could move forward in the best way for her. Do we need to not be friends anymore? Does she just need time away from me? The last thing I want to do is lose my friendship with her. She basically told me she needed a little bit of space. And then she asked me to pretend like this never happened. I agreed. However, I did not ask her if I could share with popular podcasts. Please ask listeners to keep all of this between us. <laughs> okay. okay. Good luck. Since then, things have carried on as normal. We're great friends. It still looks like we're dating whenever we're out with friends. People ask why we don't. I've tried to keep my distance by limiting one-on-one -on -one car rides, hangouts, but I can tell she still likes me. We never really talk about our dating lives, but this new girl is going to be coming around a lot. What's the best way for Jen to find out? Probably not an email to a podcast. Should I have a one-on-one -on -one chat with her beforehand? Text, phone call, in person? Nope. Do I need to get one of her friends to tell her? Should I just text the group that I'm bringing a new girl I've been dating out with us? I'd like to yes. avoid the friend group becoming awkward <laughs> and uncomfortable. I'll hang up and listen. He sent covered. a picture. Yeah. What did you say, Kyle? Yes to all Just, of it. Yeah. Put it. It's like you know, public space sort of deal. You know, it's like uh, witnesses, all that stuff. Just it's like I'm telling everyone. I'm not telling you. I'm not making it. I'm not thinking that you're gonna think it's weird. So maybe I could fucking Jedi mind trick you into not thinking it's weird. So it's just I'll tell everyone. You're on the same page as everyone else. And if you have a problem with it, then everyone else is going to see that you have a problem with it. So don't clam up and we'll just, we'll, we'll pretend we'll keep shoving it down and bottling it up. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> yeah. I feel like Sorry. you, no, I, just, I feel like you, I understand why you feel weird about this. Cause you, you know, you want to be the good guy here. You, you don't want to be the asshole, especially to your, to, you know, I don't know what your other friends, the friends in the group think about this, but I'd imagine that like, you're not the bad guy for trying to date somebody who's not this girl Jan who you're who you've been very honest with about not being attracted to so um I I don't think you owe her anything I I, I that might be a little bit harsh but I I like she she's living your her own life you're living your own life you're allowed to enjoy and date people and bring her around to a friend group she's probably not gonna like it but I mean that's life man I don't know and you know as long as I, I don't think it's a terrible idea to give your friends a heads up yeah I'm bringing this girl through and maybe right. they could like soft you know launch it to, to Jen and see what you know, just kind of talk her off of whatever cliff she's on. Um, but 
you got to live your life. Like you, you, you can't, you can't just like live your life in fear of what this girl of, of, of being afraid of what this girl, Jen is going to feel like with every move you make. Yeah. And the title of this is like, how do I not break my friend's heart or something? Right. You're not doing that. So like, no. just think like read, redo your definition of the situation. You're not breaking anybody's heart. This is somebody who's like not listening. <laughs> it's, They're just not listening to you. It's such so. a shitty situation too. like the, the man, the friend group. I had this growing up in high school, like, there was this one girl who like a lot of dudes were attracted to and she just wasn't into anyone in our friend group. And it was just kind of a thing. And it just lingered through high school and college. And it's just, a, it's just kind of awkward. It's kind of awkward for everybody in the group, to be honest with you. Um, so I, I, I do feel, and if you're the guy who's like turning everyone down, then it's probably the most awkward for you. But uh, yeah, man, I don't, I don't, I just don't think you owe her anything. I really don't. What happened to that girl, Saruti? Uh, she married a super rich guy <laughs> and he's and he's awesome. So <laughs> I thought he was going to be like, well, except for I was the one guy that really got along well with her. And damn it. I really no. wanted that for you. I really no, did. I wasn't one of the guys that was interested. She's a she's a good looking girl. Uh, weren't even interested. Wow. Well, I was I dated somebody shoulders. else. I dated a friend in, in, in high school and, and into college. And, you know, she's just she was kind of out of everyone's league, to be honest with you. And you know, wait, so she, dudes, dudes liked her in high school, had no chance. And guys still liked her while they were away at college. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh, Thanksgiving's oh, yeah. coming up. You know, it was kind of a funny thing. It'd be like, oh, cool. he's going to make, make an, he's going to take another chance here. Like, let's see how this one uh, you know, blows up in his face. And she was always really cool about it. Um, but it just was never going to happen. Like, it's just it is what it is. Uh, so, okay. yeah. Look, I mean, the, the title of the email, but this is this is a constant theme that we'll have with a lot of this stuff is that you can end up thinking you're so special, and clearly this other person really likes you, right? They've liked this sort of fake dating dynamic without anything really being on the table, maybe hoping to play the long game. You know, maybe he'll see me right in front of him and then everything will change and it'll all happen. But that's not <laughs> happening. And she already knows and you told her and she didn't like it. Nobody likes to be told that they don't, you know, hey, I like everything about you except for the serious stuff. Um, so the way you present the title of the email, and I'm not like ripping on the emailer here a little bit, but it can be a little egotistical to suggest like you're making all these moves and everything's working out but in the back of your head you're worried about this person and like how the rest of their life is going to go and i know i'm being a little dramatic but it's not exactly what you're saying here i see what you mean though. um but you know you have reason you have history to be concerned and it's cool that you're being concerned but you can't act like this is like the worst thing that's ever going to happen to her okay and it also as you you're 30 you know you're getting into your 30s the male female platonic thing becomes pretty rare, you know? Like I have some really close friends that are females. I also realize that once they're dating somebody, like I'm totally out of the picture. Uh, yeah. Like I won't even hear from them. And then if they break up, you know, You're it's back. like, hey, you still got the boat, you know? It's like, <laughs> yeah, you know? So um, this, it's just, it, it's not... This is a big deal to you because this is this is you and it's happening to you. But like Jen already knew. Jen already knew that you weren't going to do the option. And the finality of her seeing you with somebody else is probably going to be doing her a much bigger favor. That could be the best thing, is even though it's going to feel bad and you're going to feel a little guilty. You have nothing to feel guilty about. Um, and maybe she needs this a little bit. As far as launching it to the group, don't send these two pictures to the group. Because he sent a picture of the girl he's dating and the one he's not interested in. And it's like, I don't know if it's the first picture of the one he's dating. A little fitness deal here. I know I'm leaving everybody out, but obviously we don't share these pictures. Um, I see where your head is at, man. Okay? I understand your decision. And we'll leave it at that. But, you know, if this is somebody that actually cares about you and cares about the friendship, like whatever emotional stuff that she's going to be feeling and not going to like it, there could be some bumpy waters here for a little while, but these are all going to be good things because it ends you as an option for her, okay? Because the biggest thing you can be doing is wasting people's time when all of this stuff starts to happen. And in your case, you seem far more like morally adjusted in this deal where I think there's a lot of other people be like, hey, Jen's the layup. You know, we hooked up a few times or I, you know, I probably shouldn't have or whatever, or I let her on a little bit here or there. It just happens to be that you're always together in these social situations. You haven't wanted to date her. She has to accept that. And, you know, I would uh, 
She's not going to love seeing this new girl. I can tell you that. That's not going to be her favorite night out. But it's probably, as far as like the tactic of it all, maybe you have the friend, you know, maybe you have the friend say to her like, hey, I have started dating somebody. It is kind of serious. I want to bring them around. And, you know, Jen may not even want to go out that night. Now, if she does want to go out and see who it is and that kind of stuff, prepare yourself for a potential awkward night. And then the new girl is going to be like, oh, you definitely slept with her. And you're going to be like, I definitely didn't. And then she's not going to believe you. And then she's going to dump you and you start all over again. So I'm <laughs> kidding at the end. But like, it just sucks sometimes for the other person when it's like, why is that person acting so weird? And you're like, well, here's the backstory. And then they're going to be like, no way. You guys definitely slept with each other. And you're going to say no. And, you know, if the new girl is really cool, she'll understand and she'll believe you. If she's not cool, she's never going to believe you, uh, which is his own topic in itself. Do you guys want to do another one? Yeah, let's do a quick one. All right. A quick one. Okay. uh, I love this one. I got punked by some Gen Z kids at Pickup Hoops. 34 years old, 5'10", 175, thick through the chest, but a runner at heart. Pickup game is a stockier, less athletic, less skilled Leon Poe. Love that one. Uh, do you realize how skilled Leon Poe, how how good Leon Poe was to go through what he went through with his knees and still be a really nice role player for a little while? Love Leon Poe. All right, I went down to my local gym to get a few shots up on a rainy day. This is your typical gym gym with full court basketball court. So I go to the court. There's some high school age kids playing twos or threes on one end. So I pop in my AirPods, go to the other end. After I get up maybe four shots, one of the kids comes down to meet me and says, sir, do you mind stepping off to the side? They want to race. I look down at the other end and there are four kids lined up in the baseline ready to sprint, not wanting to get in the way of the race. I say, sure, and step out on the sideline. Key point, I am out of bounds on the sideline. I am standing next to water bottles and cell phones. They start the race, and one kid makes a direct 45-degree angle from under the hoop directly toward me. I stay put, not knowing exactly what this kid is doing. He runs directly into my shoulder and says, What's up, pussy boy? (laughs) Whoa. I controlled my rage. They had seven. I asked if they wanted to play fours. They did. I pointed at my assailant and said, I've got him. First play down, I parked in the low post, called for the ball, clean shoulder into his chest, layup, stared at him and said, one. I did this (laughs) for about five points, calling them out each time before stepping out to hit a two. The thing is, I don't feel like I won, even though my team did, and I worked a scrawny 17-year-old who wanted to start shit. I kind of just feel like a loser. But what could I do in that situation? I debated calling him a virgin, but wimped out. (laughs) Um. One additional detail this morning, I took my medical licensing boards, the very last step to becoming a fully autonomous practicing medical doctor, and three hours later, I'm getting called a pussy boy by a child. That's a big day. That's a big day. Uh, I love what you did. I don't have an issue with anything. Um, He's 17. If he's 14, feel a little bit different. But if you're telling me he's legitimately 17 and we know that he's 17, 17 is enough. I can't believe he did that to you. I can't believe you controlled your rage. Like, I know you can't go around beating up 17-year-olds, but if that actually happened, if that's what the guy did, ran into you knowing he was doing it on purpose, telling his buddies, hey, look, let's let's see what happens, and then you worked him McHale style, I hope you were sweaty. I hope your pits are dense. I hope you stuck, I'm talking, yeah. <laughs> Right, yeah, I, just everything. I hope you bodied him up, just pivot, 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 just shingooned him to death. Uh, I, I want to meet you. I don't think you did anything wrong. I want to shake your hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They got the, this person uh, straddled the line of child and man. Right. I think depends on the crime. You could be charged as a man. You could be charged as a child. But I think I think it's still on that line. where you are like, is this is this the pivot point? I want my day slash month slash year to take is is really showing this guy a lesson, um, you know, street fight style. And where, where were you a gym or something? So it's like. It is one of those things where, you know, we talk about like you're playing, replaying events in the shower and you're like, God, I, w- I wish I said this or I wish I did that or whatever. Like it could have been so much worse. And you are correct, especially for a guy who's got like a bright future and got to start paying off those debts. Right. So I think like, I think you did the right thing when you like you, you, you got shit. To of course lose. he the did guys, the right thing. The guys right. that have no, no one. 
I'm not, I'm not saying and nobody, nobody, um, whatever. Like, what am I? No, you fucked me up. I had a whole thing and now it's gone. Um, but I'm not, no, I, you're, nobody's saying that like, did, should you have fought him or something? I'm just saying it should make you feel better when you're, when you actually play out how things could have gone when you're just like, yeah, you know what? I actually did. I actually did get something. You didn't just walk away, you know, muttering and clenching your fists. Like you did, you left it on the court, which is nice. Yeah. I think, I think in a different situation, like you could have been leaving a grocery store. Then what would you have done? You know, Not you, at least, had, you at least had some recourse. If you had just like clock this kid, I don't think that would make you feel better. I don't know. I think that'd make you feel worse. No one's saying that. No, no one I is know. saying that. Right. So that, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think that I, 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 my point is that I think what you did was like, you made, you kind of got a message. You made the across. most of I mean, it. The only thing is like, the, because I think because he's sending this email, I wonder if the kid even cared that you beat him in hoops and, and it was kind of, he probably didn't care. Like, you know, I he got you did. in the initial thing. So like, that's probably still lingering for you. And that's a tough pill to swallow, but yeah, you can't just like punch the kid because I I can admit I I just pictured like you know the Gen Z kid haircut with like you know the the short on the sides the and like the, the poofy stupid thing in the front and like that kid's got a punchable face likely so honestly like shouts to you for not overreacting like I said you're gonna be a doctor good for you you know he doesn't have to know that your life is awesome and his life might suck and he maybe he's not going anywhere and this is the coolest thing you had is punking some older dude so uh, I, I think you played it the right way even though you probably didn't get much satisfaction out of it. Yeah, look, I mean, think wanted. about. Think about all the interactions where you have where you're like, oh, I wish I had done this. I wish I had done that. And you can't do anything when the kids, you know, I mean, even if he's 25, like you don't want to have in the middle of the day, you don't want to be getting mm. fistfights. OK, <laughs> Kyle's like, wait a second. Well, well, I mean, sir, at a certain point, it's just unacceptable. <laughs> at a certain point, it's unacceptable. This this aggression will not stand, man. Like at a certain point. I just can't understand the motivation. Like, clearly, you're trying to figure it out. And, like, the kids are like, hey, let's just mess with that guy. Like, were you doing anything? Was there anything that you were doing that was, how were you dressed? Were like, to, that, to have the balls to do that to another man who's a stranger just to prank you or whatever so that all of your buddies could then laugh. And then, like, I'd like to know more of the timeline of what happened after he said that to you and ran into you and called you pussy boy. Like, did you immediately say, hey, let's play fours? And then they were like, yeah, cool. This is going to be awesome. Or are they waiting to see what you were going to do? Like, I feel like there's part of the script is missing a little bit. But the fact that you, yeah, nobody's nobody's telling you you're awesome because you posted up a 17-year-old and worked him. We are. We're saying, if that's we're what saying you <laughs> this, this kid messed with you. And at some point when he tucked himself in that night, he had to know. There's a gap. There's a gap in my skill. There's a gap in what I can do. And, you know, I don't want my, my friends maybe had my back. Maybe I'm the cool guy out of the group. Nobody wanted to give me a hard time. But there's just a little sliver of self-doubt that crept into that kid's head that I think you should feel good about. Yeah, the other the other thing is sometimes like those th those kids are looking for a reaction. That person's looking for rea a reaction. And you didn't really give it to him. So you didn't give him the satisfaction. Maybe he wanted to start you to start a fight with him, you know? And that was like his his end goal, and you didn't do that. So, I think uh, I think you may have like weirdly won that in a way because this kid is probably looking to do something more than just like kind of mess with you in that in that one instance. Maybe he was looking to I don't know. Is this guy going to do something? You didn't do anything. Yeah, I did see a video of like a a Gen Z guy talking that insufferable slang, beating up like a a thirty five year old guy. That was hard to watch. Usually it doesn't happen that way, but maybe that was the t that was one of those times. So maybe you dodged a bullet there too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who knows? You could have gotten your ass kicked like the guy in the video. I didn't see that video, though. I hate those videos. Okay, that'll do it. That's life advice. Thanks to Kyle, Saruti, Cliff on the pod today. Uh, back on Friday, we have Canel, as we mentioned, on Friday. So we'll spend probably a little bit more time on the college football playoff rankings. Please subscribe. Ryan Russell Podcast, Ringer, Spotify. Today's life advice was presented by Modelo. Modelo, brewed for those with a fighting spirit.